you should miss any of these, you can find them on the podcast or the YouTube channel, in addition to other content that we put up. So feel free to follow us there, subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We love interacting with you guys here in person for sure. But if you are watching it later and you have questions, we'd love to interact with you on either of those platforms too. You guys know that we answer Q&A at the end of this call. If you have questions that would help you move your bookkeeping business forward or get unstuck, feel free to ask. Let us know. We do coaching at the end of this call for you for free because we really believe in running a bookkeeping business and Megan and I would do it again, a hundred percent. And Megan, I'm speaking for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. Um, Sarah says, my thoughts exactly. CB4S gave me the confidence to send out proposals I never thought I could with my bookkeeper journey currently. Love this group and support from all the mentors is amazing. So she is a student of CB4S and we've thoroughly enjoyed having her. If you want um, to add these calls to your calendar, in addition to like our free trainings, when we do those, so like our upcoming calendar, we have a keeper training on August 9th. So coming up next Friday, um, that one is $47 if you want to join us, but it is a two hour, just how me and the coaches are using keeper. We all use it a little differently because we all run our business differently. Join that, see us use it in action ask your questions. That's going to be definitely if there's something you're trying to do with that platform, we love using it. So feel free to join and ask questions. And then in September, we have a training on payroll. So if you're hesitant to take on a payroll client, this training will help you feel more confident about taking on payroll, what that looks like, what it looks like from the client side, what it looks like from your side. So we'd love to see you there as well. All of those trainings get posted to this calendar right here that you can get the QR code for. Today, we are talking about starting a bookkeeping business in 2024 and how to do it, how we would do it if we were to start over. And this is a conversation Megan and I have talked about, I think all year, really, is how would we do it again, ev evaluating. I don't know. Have you guys watched the Undercover billionaire it's, under, it's undercover billionaire right where they try to start a million dollar business all over again i've watched that show i think i watch it like again every year towards the beginning of the year just to remind myself of what is actually possible in a year so i can tell myself like whatever i'm doing isn't that big of a deal and i could probably figure it out but i, I know in my own journey in entrepreneurship it's yeah but you did that when xyz opportunity happened and could you really do it again? Unrelated to COVID, I did start my business towards the end of COVID, towards the end of 2020, but had been in the entrepreneur space since 2014, doing different business endeavors where I was selling something and filing sales tax. So I, I had a lot of that experience. Plus I had gotten my master's in accounting and had been doing financial statements for businesses. And so when I started, it was oh, well, maybe I can do analysis for them where it was just a one-time project. I got on Upwork because I Upwork was new. So it was it had just rebranded from Elance. And if you guys remember back in like the 2014 to 2019 era, those platforms got really spam heavy. And so I know I tried to start my business originally in 2015 on Fiverr and couldn't break out from the spam and just gave up. I, I tried it for about a month, didn't get anywhere. So when I started on Upwork in 2020, I had just gone through something personally, had a lot of time to rest and started the, saw an ad on YouTube where I was probably watching how to do something on business anyway. And so called it, saw this come through created a platform from my phone. Like I turned to my husband and was like, oh, that might work now. Um, realizing that they had rebranded. It was a completely new space, right? To be in. And you had to identify, like you had to verify your identity. That was new. Whereas Fiverr and those other places, you didn't have to take your driver's license and do, schedule an interview to make sure you're a real human. Um, so that was a huge perk to this platform and new at the time. So again, 
my phone profile, whatever picture I had, I just uploaded and we didn't have ChatGPT, So I had to come up with some sort of sloppy like bio and I didn't put much effort into it. I went to bed that night and didn't think about it again until I got a message saying, Hey, can you help me with this? And then another message, Hey, can you help me with this? And those were my first two clients. I then pursued Upwork. And so that was me stepping into an opportunity that presented itself. But I, I really excited about today's call because I don't want you to feel like you have to have an opportunity and that no opportunities come again. Opportunities come every year. And I know I've seen that since 2014 where I'm like, oh, I should have stepped into that because I feel like, so from my perspective, I think God does give us lots of opportunities to step into something. And we either say, yes, we're going to step into it or someone else will. And so that's where it feels, oh, so-and-so did it. So-and-so is doing that. Opportunities come up all the time. Is it your time? And there are new businesses being formed every single day. So there's no competition among bookkeepers, which is why Megan has her bookkeeping business. I have my bookkeeping business. The coaches all run their bookkeeping business. And there's no cap on what you can do with it. And there's no competition among those that are sitting here. So Megan and I have been brainstorming off and on all year. What would we do if we started over? And there, there have been a couple of things that have stayed true. A couple of them I wanted to do, but I also recognized I was overwhelmed. So I was doing Upwork. I kept feeling like I needed a website. Why did I think I needed a website? Because one of my jobs in college, when I worked five jobs, anyone worked like all the jobs while you were in college to not only put groceries on the table, but to pay the bills. That was me. I was always doing something. Because thankfully I was in a state that didn't believe in minimum wage. So I always got paid more than minimum wage, which was really helpful. But you don't have a lot of hours. And so you have sporadic hours in college, right? Probably just like you feel if you're working a nine to five in a growing system. So in one of those jobs, though, I was doing SEO for a computer repair company. And so I would go to his office, and this was actually freshman year. So it was in between senior, college, freshman, so way long ago. And he taught me how to do SEO for his business. So I knew where to post and how often and all of those things to actually get your website to rank higher in search. I felt like I had to do that in order to have a successful business because I didn't know better. And, and obviously I had been in this entrepreneur space for a while. And I was like, Instagram, like you have to spend a lot of time on Instagram to get Instagram, you have to damn people. And that felt overwhelming to me at that point in time. So I recognized you can have conceptual expectations of what it looks like to be in business. They, they may or may not be true. So let's dive in. Megan, the first thing we said we would do is we would get a free QuickBooks online account. Go ahead and get it. I did not do this. I didn't know it existed. So if you guys don't know it exists, I hope everyone on the call now knows it, knows you can have a free QuickBooks online accountant version. You do not have to pay for QuickBooks. I actually paid the $30 a month thinking I needed my own subscription. But again, I started it by myself and I wasn't planning on doing bookkeeping when I first started. I fell into bookkeeping after I got started doing financial statement, like analysis again for clients like real estate who also needed bookkeeping. So they were actually coming to me. Oh, I thought you were doing bookkeeping. I'm like, I will, if you pay me, that's why I transitioned the service and realized I could make more doing that and have the reoccurring revenue recurring revenue started to sound really good, even though I really didn't want the reoccurring projects at that point in time but it was really nice. So we would do that. So we wouldn't do desktop. We wouldn't do other platforms. We would pick one. There are other platforms you can use. You could specialize in zero. You could specialize in wave. Uh, wave, I think just got rid of their free version. I haven't looked at the latest. It's still there to an extent, but yeah, it's not what it was. <laughs> yeah. There's softwares like Odoo. And so you have people who want to be in a specific software. I would just pick one. Um, we prefer QuickBooks or have up until like, all of their changes. 
I still prefer QuickBooks, but um, at the po this point in time, I'm not switching my business away from QuickBooks. But it's been so user friendly for my business owners, like just so easy for them to either if they want to get in, it's really easy for me to na help them navigate QuickBooks because they've probably gotten in and they can figure it out themselves because QuickBooks is designed for the business owner, not for the accountant. That's why I've stayed with it. And I finally just had to pick one. I was trying to do all the platforms at one point in my business and I got away from that in the past 18 months. I have one client that is not in QuickBooks online still to this day. And I think that will end by the end of the year. So that's the first thing we would do. Is we go ahead and do that because we can start learning. If you're not familiar with how to use QuickBooks, you can start learning in that because in that QuickBooks online accountant. So if you guys are already aware of this, bear with me for the person who's listening to the replay that doesn't isn't aware of this because it would have saved me a lot of time. You can do your bookkeeping in that software. You don't have to have a subscription for your own bookkeeping. You could also get a cheap subscription, like a simple start or not the self-employed. There's like now a whatever it's called, subscription in between, where you can actually do your personal bookkeeping. And that is a great way to practice bookkeeping because you already know what all the transactions are. You can learn how, if you've got a mortgage on your house, you can learn how to do the statement and track a loan. If you have a vehicle loan, you can track the vehicle loan. You can connect your credit cards if you have credit cards and learn how to do that on your personal books. And it'll be a little different than like business categories. But all I do when I set up my personal books was I just went and got, actually, I found a really nice PDF. If anybody wants it, I will forward it to you. I saved it where it's the household categories. And I just picked the ones I want wanted and I redid the chart of accounts for that. And I use that. It's a great way to practice QuickBooks and a bookkeeping, what it looks like every month, how to pull the statements, get used to looking at the statements, especially if you don't come from an accounting background. Like I used to eat, eat, breathe boxes of statements and contracts and agreements. You probably don't, and you probably don't come from a background where you do that. This, and, and typically you're just opening the statement. What do I owe? I just want to know that. So this gets you into using the statements for bookkeeping. So that's what we would do if we were just getting started. That's like step one is QuickBooks online. And we would start doing our personal books in it. Step two, I probably, Megan, feel free to disagree with me. I don't know if we had decided step one was L like step two was LLC or step three was LLC. So whichever order you guys want to go in, I don't think there's a right and wrong way to do this because I actually did step two. What I want to say step two is, but step three could also be step two. So y'all can interchange these. Start letting people know that you're doing bookkeeping and that you're in business, that you're looking for clients. I would go start talking to people and I would honestly probably find my first client before I went and got my LLC. That's what I did too, but you could absolutely go ahead and file LLC, get that confidence and then go find clients. I just, I would almost do those simultaneously, if not go find clients first. And the conversation we always have is how do we go find clients? So Meg and I discussed this in depth. What would we do if you stripped us of our bookkeeping business to be dramatic and we had to go start over? We would pick one platform for both of us. That'd probably be Facebook. Knowing what I know now, I might argue a different platform. But if I wasn't established on that platform yet, I would probably go ahead and do, do Facebook too. And I wouldn't make it complicated. We talked about making it complicated because at some point you can up level what you're doing on Facebook or another platform, YouTube, podcast, Instagram, blogging. Pinterest, like you could do all the other things you could absolutely. Um, but what we have found is focusing on one platform and then utilizing that platform to the best of its ability. Instead of just posting once in the morning before you go to work and then hoping, we still want to have a hundred conversations with people on Facebook. And by that, I do not mean you have to DM a hundred people. 
I want to engage with people in Facebook groups and have a conversation about how do I do this in QuickBooks? Is, is this category or that category? And I just want to answer is it's this category. Um, I know when I started, I didn't have any more bandwidth than just doing that. But if you do, you can answer those questions then in store, like video format or whatnot. Um, I was listening to someone last night who they are real estate, they're in the real estate, they're buying, selling rentals type thing. And he actually started recording videos just to answer people's questions. And then he would send them the link to that video. And he actually grew a video platform by doing that, which is cool. I would not do that at the beginning because it might feel like you don't know what to say. You don't know, don't feel like you know anything about bookkeeping. So I would not put that stress on you at the point that you start answering questions. So it's this expense or that expense. You might record a short video and put it up. You might just record it into your story form so that no one can use it against you later <laughs> and just practice because stories delete. They don't stay. Right. You see something from my, like my kids, I post in story form because it deletes. So I can share it with people, enjoy it, save it in my personal album on my phone for them, but it doesn't stay on Facebook forever. Right. So that's what we would do is we would just get on Facebook. We would use it to its max capacity, meaning not just posting once a day, not talking to people. We would be talking to people. We would be welcoming a conversation in the DMs if it Hey, let's continue this conversation. DMs instead of this chat thread. Absolutely. Um, and then we'd be posting more than once a day. So Megan, um, I think is a really good example of this where she decided to 10 X what, what she was doing on Facebook to do exactly what we're talking about. And I will let her tell you exactly what she did, but I've analyzed what she did probably more than she. Yeah. So whenever I started my business and talking about this, I don't know how much I would change specifically of outside of maybe doing more of it sooner than later. But when I first started, I was posting like once a day, once every other day on Facebook and then listened to the 10X role and decided I needed to do way more, th more of that. So somewhere between five to 10 times a day, I was posting in the beginning of starting my business, but it wasn't always, and I didn't have all the bookkeeping knowledge, experience, all that. So it wasn't always like a sales post. Hey, you need a bookkeeper because of this X, Y, Z or anything like that. Sometimes it was just like, Hey, do you need reports to file taxes or in even other stuff as well. So it was not always, and e even if you go to my page today, it's not always marketing post. Sometimes it's post, like mindset post, motivational type post, but it would have my business logo or I would check into my business or something like that. So you would still see my business name there, but it was a motivational type post, post about my daughter, whatever. But I was making sure I was posting a lot because when they're interacting with those types of posts, they're interact, they're going to start seeing your business post as well. So they're getting familiar with who you are, what you offer, and they're going to start seeing that stuff in your new in their newsfeed a lot more than what they were previously. So I did tons of that. And again, I still would to this day start with that and probably hit Facebook harder than I did in the beginning, just because in the beginning of my business, I threw it at so many different things. Like, let me mail letters to these businesses. Let me do some email marketing, which meant cold emailing random businesses who didn't want anything to do with what I had to offer. And a lot of that stuff that took tons of time that got absolutely no results, but it was something that people recommended and was like, Hey, do this. So it definitely be way more on social media. And I'll also say this, I started my business in 2019. So that was pre COVID. It felt like a lot of people were less willing to do or talk about virtual stuff at that time because they weren't as familiar with, Hey, you can handle all this virtually. You don't have to have copies of receipts. You don't have to have copies of all this stuff. Whereas everybody saw when COVID happened, everything could be done virtually for the most part. They're doing doctor's appointments virtually now, like all the things. So I feel like that opened up like a lot more avenues and probably could have grown even quicker on social media doing all those things for sure.
Yeah, I, I would say I have regrets when I started my business. I'm um, just trying to do all the things like really like I needed to experiment instead of just focusing on one thing. I did default to focusing on Upwork because that was what was getting me clients, but I kept, there's got to be an easier way. And I don't like um, looking for like a shortcut. And I think um, if I had just doubled down on what I was doing and so that I would have said and focused on Facebook, knowing what I know now, if I could keep my knowledge starting over, the only thing I would add, and I think this was like number four on our list was, and, and I think you, you agreed to this, that you would have done this as well, would be when it came to our website, instead of fussing over the website, I know I fussed over the website. I'm not saying Megan, didn't I don't think you fussed over your website. I uh, yeah, I didn't have one for a while. <laughs> Uh, I fussed over it. I changed platforms so many times and focused a lot more on blogging. I would have skipped that instead. And I would have selected a platform that had built in email marketing because I was getting conversations with people and I could have maximized those conversations now knowing that it takes six months for someone to say yes, potentially in the accounting space. Like, yes, you have people that say yes right away. You also have people that say no right away or they ghost you. You don't yep. know why that they, you don't know why they ghosted you. I have ghosted people accidentally because life happened. So like last week I was doing a surgery. One of my daughter had a surgery. Like I was ghosting people. Speaking of which, there's someone on the call that I just sent a message to. Hopefully you get it. So if you <laughs> feel like I ghosted you in the last week, check your messages. I've gotten back to you. I promise. But like life happens. And so don't assume it's you. And if I had an email marketing thing set up and I pursued, I did the same thing Megan was. I told, someone told me do cold email, buy a list and do that. And you really damage your domain by doing that. Really damage it. And some of you, we've talked to bookkeepers who have damaged their domain beyond repair and how Allie has had to help them correct me if I'm wrong I I think you help someone like new domain or counsel them on you're gonna have to do next steps domain new domain new email like we gotta write the ship because it really destroyed their domain it could destroy your email and so you'll have to switch email providers depending on how it's all set up so Allie can help you with that if you've done that But these warm emails where someone has said, hey, I want more information from you. I would collect their email address. Like they're getting on a Calendly call with you or a Zoom call or a phone call with you. And so you might be sending them some sort of appointment. Get them to opt in. Simply get with Allie to help set this up. I don't think it needs to be complicated. It can take an hour. I think you just need like a homepage, a contact page, and... I'm going to say like a quiz, something more interactive, get this training from me, get a quiz from me instead of a PDF download. Like the seven things your XYZ niche isn't doing, isn't going to get their attention. Let's be real. That's been done. It's overkill. You're not going to stand out from the crowd by doing stuff like that. But can you give a training? Can you give a live training? I would do that in exchange for their email address. And then I would just commit whether you have no people on your email list. If you want to have someone on your email list, send it to me. I'll sign up. And I expect to see an email every week from you. (laughs) But I would just send an email every week. And it could just be, uh, Megan was the best creative person when I first started. I had a bunch of people that I had gotten on a phone call with and just over the course of a summer or whatnot. And I reached out to her and I was like, now what? I didn't have anything set up to really follow up with them. And I was like, I want to follow up more than my like normal follow-up sequence. And she's like, there's a holiday coming up. Why don't you tell them all happy holidays? You know, you're here if, if, Megan, I forget what you told me to do. What do you do? You say, because I used it and it worked. Like, All I did around the holidays, typically what I'll do is just like happy holidays, like hoping, hope you and your family have a good one or something along those lines, something simple, nothing been business related. But of course, it's coming from your business email and it has your signature with your business information on it. Yeah. They're going to open it. 
because who doesn't open a happy holidays email if it hits your inbox? If it goes, if you've said, hey, that person go to a folder, I'm not opening it. But if it hits my inbox, I'm opening it because who doesn't want to smile? And so what I started doing when I did start my email list is I found the cheapest email provider and you guys get a discount through MailChimp with your QuickBooks Pro Advisor if you have that. If not, there are like three other ways to do it. Allie can help you with that. I can think of two platforms I would do in a heartbeat uh, if I was doing it over. But I just started sending to my email list, Happy New Year's, here's my office hours. We're closed whatever day. And I just started doing that on my email. Um, once a month would be fine. If you just sent out an email the first of every month, you could schedule them and you're going to show up. And what that, what I found was that allows the person who got busy or just, okay, I don't know how to really solve this problem. I don't know if I really want to spend the money. They get into a busy crunch and they're like, but my tax preparer is asking for this and your email pops up and it is really easy to say, oh yes, please just clean this up, please. Thank you. And that's a nice bonus. And if they don't want an ongoing monthly, you're going to get the cleanup, full price cleanup. And then likely what's going to happen is they're going to be like, oh, can you just do this every month? I don't want to go. Or they're just going to, can you do this every month? Catch me up, do it every month. And you're going to quote them accordingly. And that would be amazing. I know that because I've had people do it. So that would be the bonus. If you have any bandwidth to get on like a, to spend five hours one day to set up website, email list, and go ahead and write three or four emails. You can automate it. I would do that if I had some time to set aside, like on a holiday or something. And I did take, if we had Mondays off or Fridays off when I was starting my business, those were 100% used for business growth. So yeah, it was a low-key family day, but I did work on my business those days because the whole family's home, you might not be as needed as other times. So you might be able to have a low key holiday or just do something at night. So you have the whole morning undisturbed working on your business. And then you guys can go do family stuff at night. That's what I did. I don't know if it worked, so I would not recommend it. And then I would try to talk to, we said on Facebook, like 50 to a hundred people in conversations. Like that would be my one goal is just conversation. So my goal isn't my email list. My goal isn't necessarily closing the client. My goal is to talk to people because talking to people opens doors. It opens doors to podcast opportunities. I have seen it open the doors to documentary op opportunities. I have seen it open the doors to blog opportunities, featuring you or inexpensive sponsorship opportunities where someone can shout you out and they have a really large audience, like 20 or 30,000 people are going to watch that video and see that sponsorship. And if they're somewhat aligned with you, you're going to get a client from that. Like over the six months of being, being shouted out. So that's why I would focus on conversations. And I, I feel like I need to highlight the goal of conversations is literally have conversations to figure out who am I in this world of business? <laughs> Like, where do I fit in and what opportunities are out there for me to step into? It's not always to get the client. Clients will come through conversations because someone's going to be like, you're going to have the connector. You're going to find that person who's really connected in business. They are a social butterfly. That is their gift. And they're going to be like, oh, come do a lunch and learn. I'm a real estate broker and an agent. We do lunch and learns with all of my agents every month. Will you come tell them the importance of being an escort? And you're going to say yes. And then you're going to come say, hey, Sherry, what's the importance of being an escort? And then you're going to go into it looking like a pro. I promise. Like, it will be okay. Allie, <laughs> you're laughing. That's, it's happened. It's happened. I know you will look like a pro. Um, or we'll at least talk about, hey, here's the benefits and I can help you with a presentation so you can lean on the presentation um, on at least basic stuff. And, and I can help you tweak it to, yeah, we're talking about S-Corps, but we're talking about how you really need book bookkeeping done so that we can determine or so that your tax preparer can determine. So there's a couple of ways, depending on your comfort level and your art, your experience already, familiarity, we can tailor 
So if you get yourself into a situation, you're like, I, I don't know. Now, granted, I hope you're not offering like tax advice and then coming to me to bail you out. Don't do that. Y'all hopefully understand what I mean. Like within reason, if it's something you've heard us talk about, um, we can help you position yourself as a person of authority when you get invited to the podcast, when you get invited. And it's really because as we get on these calls with you, the pro- coaching calls, we get to learn you. The advice that I give um, Abel, Teresa, Tom are all different as I get to know them. Because as you guys share in these calls, we remember a lot of stuff. I don't remember everything. And you might have to jog my memory. And as soon as my memory is jogged, I'm like, oh, this is what. And then we just ask some questions. Where are you headed? What is your personality? And we start tailoring it to you because... You're like, Megan says, and Megan, you can jump back in. You say, you can never say the wrong thing to the right person. And so they're connecting with like your personality. So there's no stress. And there's no stress when I'm giving you, helping you find where you fit because it's fun. It's fun to be yourself. You don't have to copy people on Facebook. You don't have to go stop Megan's Facebook and say, okay, what is she posting? She's posting motivational than this. So I'm going to go post motivational than this. You don't have to do that. If you like cats. Don't. Yeah, (laughs) don't do that. If that's you, do it. But if it's not, don't. Because then you're going to, you want to attract people that you're going to enjoy working with, that you're going to want to have conversations. Because you're going to have more conversations with some of these people than you hope to probably. Or than you think you will. And some of them are going to become friends and whatever throughout the journey. Think about that whenever you're making the post, when you're having the conversations. I'll also do want to throw in, (laughs) don't feel like you have to get on the podcast and stuff in the beginning. That's great. And like now I would, but Cherry and I were talking a little bit about it this morning. And in the beginning of my business, there's no way I would have. And if somebody told me I had to do that to grow my business, I probably would have never started the business. So there's, and even, and I'm saying podcast, but even like Facebook, whatever, don't feel like one of these ways is the only way to grow your business. You have to do what you feel comfortable doing, what you're going to enjoy doing and what you're going to actually show up and do. If you hate it or you are terrified of it, you're not going to show up and you're not going to do it and you're not going to have any success. So it's got to be something that you're okay doing and you're going to show up. Facebook for me was a great way to do it because I was still learning. It was something where if somebody DM'd me and asked a question, I could go do some research and figure it out or ask a coach, post in a group, those sort of things and figure out like, hey, how do I answer this question or what's the correct answer to this without being on a live or whatever and somebody saying, hey, here's this question. I feel like I'm being put on the spot. And then also like talking about talking to 100 people, that doesn't necessarily mean you're DMing people or anything like that, that can come in so many different ways. So commenting on their posts, getting active in groups where business owners are at, having them interact and comment on your posts. It could be sending some DMs, but it could be, it's probably going to be a combination of all the things. And even to say a hundred people, are there some people in person that you're bumping into that you can have some conversations with as well? Because those go a long way too. Conversation um, with the meeting this morning. Guys, on Upwork, when I was doing Upwork, I didn't have anyone else doing Upwork. That was just something that worked for me. And when I tell other people, like, I have told other coaches as I've tried to get, we all seek brainstorming for what we're doing. That has not been received well by a lot of people that have looked at my business. And yet I was able to use Upwork to grow my business past six figures because it worked for me. And I just, I got up, I was consistent daily on it that's the key at the end of the day no matter what it is you have to be consistent yeah it has to work for you so double down if if there's something that you're getting more and how i would evaluate it isn't necessarily like likes don't likes alone aren't giving you like super feedback but if you're like hey where am i getting more traction at instagram alignable or facebook where do you have the most engagement? Like, where do you have Com- the most conversations? Yeah. That's- how, where have you had conversations? I know when I started my business, that's how 
no, I ended up getting a client two or three weeks after I really went full in and market it like crazy. But the first couple of clients that I got, it was like, okay, where did they come from doing all the marketing that I was doing? And I was like, okay, that's what I'm sticking with. I forget everything else at this point. And just to touch on the like thing, there's, if you go look at my page, a lot of times, especially my business posts, there's the same couple of people that are liking those posts. Sometimes nobody ever likes those posts. So a lot of times it's Sherry and a friend's brother <laughs> or Kaylee's friends. Like it's something like that. Um, so it feels, hey, I'm not getting any engagement on my posts, but guess what? People are in my DMs or calling me or whatever, and they're like, hey, we saw your post on Facebook. So don't judge it just because they haven't commented, just because they haven't liked it, because there's a ton of people that I've signed as clients that I didn't have a clue. I'm not going to say I didn't have a clue who they were, but I didn't have a clue that they were interested in bookkeeping services because they never liked the post. They never commented. I would have never reached out to them, but they reached out to me. So definitely don't judge it based off of just that. Yeah, absolutely. So I like Megan's posts. So me and Megan, we're a huge supporter of each other's posts, just because who you like and engage with is who you're on Facebook. I would be cautious of just liking other bookkeepers stuff because your stuff That's is you're to other bookkeepers. So you, you really want to develop a network of people who are in either complementary industries or in the niche that you're trying to attract. Some of you guys are like, I don't have a niche. Me and Megan, we don't have a niche. Actually, I was told the other day by someone that I do have a niche. And I was like, oh, I guess I do in that sense. But I don't have a niche when it comes to bookkeeping. I will take anyone who is not a jerk. Laughing, but I, I <laughs> um, I'm happy to do most people's bookkeeping if you are a pleasant human being and sometimes it's just you're a pleasant human being but you and like my personality and your personality are not jiving so it's not a you problem it's a me problem and that's fine too and that's why it's important, why to, it's show important to show up as show up. yourself absolutely absolutely I'm just catching up yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what do you want to do? I'm, I, Ali, is that you that posted that? What do you want to do? So she's making a comment there if you guys read it. Where do you want to be? For me, Upwork was where I wanted to be at that point in time because I didn't want to show my face. I am an introvert and I was focused heavily on kids at home. In that season of life, I had two under two, which have you ever tried to be on a phone call with two under two? They are getting into the syrup and bottle, like what the $15 thing of syrup and the $5 bucket of yogurt. So I've got scars from that. <laughs> Just sitting on the couch, like mixing these two things together because sister could push the chair over and get into the fridge. <laughs> um, so yeah, so they were 13 months apart. Yeah, one under two is as far as and then I got, I was, I became pregnant with number three when they were three and two. And that's what I wanted to be doing. I didn't really want to be, okay. I, I desired, I will say I desired to be on YouTube at that point. I desired some of these other things, but it wasn't feasible. It was beyond my bandwidth. And I started doing things poorly. I was, if you go look at some of my YouTube videos, they're done poorly. If you look at some of my old content, it's done poorly. I had to rebrand and show up differently to get unstuck at one point because I was showing, like I was trying to do too many things and I wasn't articulating what I actually did and got a phone call saying, Hey, from a best friend called me up on the way to a tax person saying, is this what you do? If so, I never want to touch this again send me a bill. Like, <laughs> And she also commented, she's like, I don't know how you're working from home doing this, but thank you so much. I don't know how you can take a phone call with your kids. She has more kids than me, but yeah. So how often would you be able to say, how often would you say you should be posting every week, currently doing daily? Is that too much? I would say the answer to that is what are your goals and how quickly are you wanting to reach them? Because that should be the driving factor on how much marketing you're doing at the end of the day. That was for me. And I knew I wanted, I had goals and I knew I wanted to get there as quick as I could. So I gave it as much effort as I could. So 
think about it from that standpoint. Is daily too much? No, <laughs> not in my opinion at all. It's not enough. It wasn't enough for me in the beginning. And Megan, you got to the point where you're posting five times a day. A day? Five, yeah, sometimes five, anywhere from five to 10 times a day. Yeah, it was a lot in the very beginning. So at one point you said, I want more from this business. Therefore, I'm going to show up more in people's yep. face. Yep. And, and that's where you were posting. So I call it your three pillars. So in my analysis, Megan, de- un- unconsciously develop three pillars. And so I would factor in what are your three pillars? This is a great way to figure out what you should be posting. She was into mindset because it was something she was consuming herself for herself. So stuff that was motivational, encouraging things that really tested your mindset, she would share. She posted her business and then she posted her family. You would never see, okay, now that I say this, you will see her dog running away. That happens often. (laughs) You will never see, I guess that falls under family now because it's, yeah, (laughs) please. And, And that got you a lot of, that was a natural, okay. So an example. So she posted those three things. And if something came across her feed that was worth sharing, she would simply share it or she would post it or whatever. She would go to Pinterest and find that encouraging motivational post. And here's what she didn't do. She didn't say, what are my church friends going to think of this post? She didn't say, what is the networking group going to think of this scripture post? She just posted it because it resonated with her. And she said, She didn't have the time to care. Okay, I fall into this trap. I get really tripped it out. What are the bookkeepers going to think of this post? Or what are, like, guys, I posted some really funny stuff this week. Like, just because we're trying something new. But I was going to say something and I forgot. I just got distracted by the we're trying something new part. But No, but you're right. You just have to show, and we talk about that all the time. You and I are great at it. Just show up, take messy action, just do it. (laughs) One, it's going to get you in the habit of doing it. And then the more you show up and you do it, the easier it's going to get. So Richard, Megan pointed something out yesterday to me. Um, Just a reminder, we all know this. It takes 21 days to build a habit. So for you, it's not about coming up with content. And I think that's where we get, we make it really hard. So I'm really glad you made that comment. Um, This is where we make it really hard is we feel like we have to come up with bookkeeping content. So we have to come up with posts that a business owner would want to read. Is your QuickBooks bank balance off? Is that bugging you? Like it's bugging me. Like I get a little eye twitch when it's, yeah. They don't, most of your business owners don't actually care that much about QuickBooks. They just want to know that you understand it. (laughs) So I think when we get into this mindset that we have to come up with content that they like, I've got two solutions. One, I would set a timer potentially for 21 days. And I would show up to that timer every single time. It's going to go off maybe at 6 a.m., at noon, at 7 p.m. And you're just going to quickly, within five minutes, make a post. Whether that's you typing something, sharing something, like you have five minutes. And you got to get something posted, right? Now, it's an extreme. You can tweak that. I'm saying that off the top of my head. I'm brainstorming. What would I do if I felt like that? The second thing I would do, um, again, is just be yourself. So, like, I would stick to something for 21 days, not missing a single post. Actually, I'm going to give you grace. You could miss lunch. But two of the three, you probably have to get every single day. If you get two of the three, I I think you're good. But I would one thing. Yeah, one thing that I did was now again, I was posting more than that. But when I woke up in the morning, that's the first thing that what I that I did because I was working full time and I had a two hour commute to and from work every day. And I'm a single mom. So first thing when I woke up in the morning before I did anything else, I had something ready. I was posting on Facebook when I went to my lunch break before I went back to work. I po- made sure I posted when I laid in bed to go to sleep at night. I posted something on Facebook. So yeah. We are not telling you to be glued to your phone. We're not. No. And again, what I said earlier, what are your goals? If your goal, if you're not, if your goals aren't, I'm trying to leave, like mine, I was trying to leave my job and I was trying to leave it 
as quick as I could because I was trying to be there for my daughter. And in four months, I was able to do that. So what are your goals and how quick are you trying to reach them? So you, yeah, don't feel like you have to do what we did at all. So the last five minutes, I want to address, I could post all day long, but I don't have business owners looking at my post. Megan and I talked about this, but before some of you guys are going to jump off before I answer this. And I want to share a book real quick called, I, I've shared this book before. I'm going to share the link. I'll show you the picture. If you haven't read, this is a sh super short read. There is also a keynote on it on YouTube, but it's a super short read. I would recommend buying this book to read over the course of your years in business. It's called The Pumpkin Plan by Mike Michalowicz. The subtitle is A Simple Strategy to Grow a Remarkable Business in Any Field. And this changed how I looked at clients and how I decided to deal with problem clients. So I wanted to share that book with you guys real quick. The link is in the chat for you. Yeah, you can, we're gonna post a book list to the website. So if you guys want to follow that, I'm just still catching up from last week. So as soon as I can get that posted, I will share it with you. So don't feel like you have to go back this week. It will be on the list because I don't like all of his books. Some of his books aren't that good, but there are a couple of top runners that I really like from it. So they'll be on there. Okay. So I could post all day long, but I don't have business owners seeing my content. This is only, so posting is only part of it. So Richard, posting is only part of it, right? Richard's problem was, I don't even know what to, it, it's really hard. And so I was trying to solve the, let's not make it hard. Let's, when we're starting our business, there's already a lot of resistance doing something new. So let's find the path of least resistance. Like you're planting a garden. You want the water to take the path of least resistance so that the garden gets as much water as possible. We want to do that in our business too. So when we say, yeah, posting, that's because you're going to also be in these other Facebook groups. So that's, so that's A, posting. B, step B is really important. We talked about getting into like cottage bakery groups just because it's a low hanging fruit of reference. But this could be, I got a client from joining a group of real estate agents. Me and the admin started talking. She gave me a shout out and I got a client. So that, cause that's a conversation. So me and her started talking. I was asking her about the group, how she started it, what she was up to. Oh, your, her group was super cute. So we just started chatting. I think maybe she DM'd me to see what does this person want to do in my group? And I was like, oh, I'm just here to serve. Your group is, at, I promoted, I encouraged, complimented, both lifted her up what, what she was doing. And we had a conversation. That shout out allowed me to connect with another person in the group who wanted a phone call. I had her for a couple of years until her business wound down. They do though. So they don't allow you to spam their group and post like an advertisement. So if you see Megan's like business posts, they have a, her logo, they're branded. She could not post that in some of the groups that you're talking about. But if someone says, how are you guys keeping track of mileage? I was just told, by someone I should be tracking mileage. You're going to get on and comment and say, you're going to track it in QuickBooks online or Mile IQ or whatever you prefer. You can say, hey, the top three apps, apps I have found by helping other business owners as a bookkeeper are these three. Now you've talked about your business without getting kicked out of the group. That's a conversation because hopefully they respond, but we're going to keep trying to put those pieces of information in. That's what we mean by groups. So you're not going to share those business posts to those groups. We're going to go start to find problems. So an entrepreneur is a problem solver. That is the definition, <laughs> the least definition of an entrepreneur, right? Is we seek to serve. We're going to go solve problems. We're in those Facebook groups to find where are these business owners having problems at. They don't know what software to use. They don't even know that they should be keeping track of these expenses. And we're just going to answer their questions, which makes it a little more passive. We have to be looking for them. What you can also do is you can search those Facebook groups. Maybe someone two years ago asked a question. So you can search QuickBooks. You can search mileage. You could search expense. You can search how do I record and just see what comes up. 
And then you're gonna, you could screenshot the little question and then post it and answer it on your Facebook. So you're gonna post the picture and then answer it as a post on your Facebook. So like your content gathering, you can send it as an email. You could answer the question. You could do it as a, you could get bigger, right? You can get more complicated with what you're doing. But your goal is to figure out what are these business owners asking about? Because that's the content I want to be answering on my Facebook. Two, if it's recent enough, can I go ahead and comment on it and say, hey, my experience serving other business owners, their top three favorite apps are XYZ. And so now you've said, I serve other businesses as a bookkeeper. Hopefully that helps on the, because that, that, that's what we mean by conversations. We're not posting stuff, just hoping people have a conversation with us. But we do want to post, like yesterday I did a silly, a silly reel on my Facebook with, I manually closed out like 400 tabs on my phone. Guys, I don't even know how I had that many tabs open. I never closed it out. There is a history option. I could have just clicked the history button and closed it all out, but I started closing them because I just needed to close a couple so that I could get an app to work. And then I saw how quickly I could close them out. And so I just did a screen recording. I got a couple of conversations, obviously not, not business related, but I got a couple of an engagement that helps now if I were to go back and put, post a business, which is why Megan does this, um, a business post some pe more people are going to see it because my last post got some natural engagement on it. So when I say a hundred conversations, it, I'm going to say, Megan would, I would count that as a conversation because I got someone to engage on it and I got to comment back. Like we had a little conversation. It wasn't business related. Would you count that in the hundred? I would at first, I would at first in the first six months, because the goal is to get. Yeah. Time. I wouldn't make it over complicated or overthink it or what, or anything like that. But of course, if you have other conversations that you can have, definitely count those too. But the, yeah, cause you're, they're going to start to get, even if they're not interested right now in six months, they may need a bookkeeper or they may have a friend that needs a bookkeeper. So yeah, I think that's going to definitely help. And same if you comment on their post, because you see that all the time. If they comment on your post, then you start seeing their stuff in your newsfeed more. Vice versa. It works vice versa, too. So think about that when you, if you add, send a friend request and you're like, oh, I'd really like to work with this type of business. When they accept your friend request, go comment on their post. Then they're going to start seeing your stuff more, too. So, yeah, definitely. Well, I hope this was helpful. I don't see, let me know if I missed any questions. You're so welcome, Richard. Um, I hope you guys um, found something out of this helpful. This is really what we would do if we were starting over. If you gave us a blank slate, we would get on our Facebook and go to town. There are other options if you have the bandwidth to do it, but we would want to see like the fun, the foundation has to be there before we add anything, if that makes sense. We will see you guys next week. Um, if you haven't, if you want to show up to the keeper training, be watching the Facebook group for all of that. Yeah. Also Sherry, before we hop off, just to throw in guys, I know we had a lot of, and I don't know if anybody's even watching, but a lot of new people joined the group this week. They were interested in starting a bookkeeping business and stuff. So you may not have one at all yet. We do have a course that will walk you through step-by-step -step on how to do that what that looks like, learning the bookkeeping, marketing the business, doing all the things. So we have the course and then we have our community where we can support and coach you. So we have a group similar to this, but on a much smaller scale with all the coaches over there and some one-to-one -one coaching. So we have all that available. If you want to hop on a call and chat about any of that and see what would be a good fit for you, let us know. Yep. So tailored to you, which is amazing. Um, we will see you guys next week or on the next weekend at the Keeper Training. Allie just posted the link to uh, more information about what Megan just mentioned. If you want to learn more about it, like you want to ask me and Megan questions, feel free to do that. We love talking with you guys and brainstorming like what your next step might be. And that might not be joining the community. You might need something else more tangible and we're happy to let you guys know that. So, okay, we'll see you guys next week. Have a happy weekend. All right, bye.